And we are back with Professor Bosworth. We're finding out very interesting things about the Bronx because the Census Bureau has been giving us this information all along. He's the guy who's helping us decipher it and find out exactly who we are as a people in the Bronx. Very important to know. And I, and, and I think this is the kind of information, Professor, that most people don't bother to learn. And it's out there. It's accessible. And thanks to you, it becomes even more accessible. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see now, because the breakdown of the different ethnic groups, that's something that you have really looked at in the Bronx, right? Right. Well, as we mentioned before, uh, we have a map showing each individual block in the Bronx. There Is that over the, the right map? Yes. There are okay. over 3,000 uh, blocks uh, depicted on this map, in fact, about 3,500. And uh, you'll see that uh, most of them seem to be colored. Uh, there are shades of red, there are shades of green, there are shades of blue. There's some blocks which you see are blank or, or white. If you see a color there, it means that on that block, an absolute majority of the residents on that block are either non-Hispanic white or black or Hispanic. Deep red, deep green, and deep blue means that on those blocks, 75% or more of the population is either white, black, or Hispanic. So You'll so notice there are very few blocks that aren't colored. Yes. This means that in the entire Bronx, there seems to be a pattern of segregation, not segregation, that's a bad word, but certainly separation of groups, uh, which, which is, is quite extraordinary. And um, we, can, we can see here those areas where the white population, which is still leading the Bronx, it's, uh, the Bronx is down to about 12% non-Hispanic white now. It was uh, 85% in 1960. Uh, and, and we can see those areas where the uh, uh, white population uh, so what you dominate. see there, what we see there in orange or light or pink or whatever that is, again, I'm colorblind here, but whatever you see there that's, that's kind of orange, that's the Hispanic that's population. That's Latino, that's Hispanic, And exactly. when we see dark uh, orange, then that's... 75% or more. Even more Hispanic. Yes. And the same and the thing light blue, means 50 to 75. And the blue represents? Yes. The blue represents the white population. You'll see that, 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 that covers Riverdale, Frog's Neck, City Island, the area around Pelham Parkway, south of Pelham Parkway, Morris And the Park. green represents the African-American population. The African-American population, which more and more is, um, it, it can, can be uh, uh, localized around uh, Williams Bridge, Wakefield. Although you'll see down in Tremont, south of Cortona Park, there still is a black population. The two populations are entirely different. Uh, middle class, more middle class, homeowning black population in the north no. and the poor black population in the South Bronx. Now we're going we're gonna to look at a series of graphics now that indicate the, uh, the, uh, the population and how it, yeah. uh, different groups. Here we're uh, broadening out. We're not, we don't just see the Bronx here. We, the Bronx is in the middle there, but actually we go as far up as, as southern Westchester. We see Staten Island. We see a little bit of Nassau County. We see all of New York City. And, and what, what I want to do there? here is to indicate there are, there are going to be, I think, seven maps for each map, one dot on the map indicates 50 people. Okay, That's this, the is Dominican a, population. this is a Dominican population. And what we see is an extraordinary concentration. You can't even see the dots in Washington Heights and also in the West Bronx. There are many, many more Dominicans in the Bronx now than there are in Manhattan. Even and in Washington Heights? Yes, mm. in all of Manhattan. There are more, wow. more Dominicans in the Bronx than there are in all of Manhattan. And uh, this number is increasing. The Dominican population is the population which is increasing more than any other for the Bronx. So and without the Dominican increase, the Bronx population would fall considerably. The general population, the numbers. Yes, the would numbers fall. would fall considerably. There so now this is where we're getting the new, the new Bronx uh, residents that are coming from the Dominican Republic. How, yeah. how or from Washington Heights. Or from Washington Heights. But how yes. recent is this? How recent is this movement? It's quite recent. It's been going on, obviously in Washington Heights, it's been going on for 20 years or more. Uh, in, in, I would say within the past 15 years, uh, Dominicans have begun to cross the river and uh, uh, find uh, housing which is perhaps a bit more attractive than Washington Heights, and more space, obviously, than one can find in Manhattan. So let's and, see. And uh, the, the, the movement has gone on. This is, this is what is saving the 
Bronx population from, as, I, as, as we indicated, uh, falling considerably. The Bronx Interesting. population, the Dominican in fact, community is would like to know yes. that, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. Let's yes. look Absolutely. at the West Indian community, right? Is that West yes. Indies? Well, the West Indian community also is heavily located in the extreme North Bronx, but of course, Bronx West Indians are overshadowed by the West Indian population of Brooklyn. There's no question that Brooklyn what, is yeah, the center for the West Indians. Mm -hmm. It's also true, of course, that the, the Dominican population has its center in that Washington Heights plus West Bronx single area where they predominate. Okay, next, next, next shot, please. The um, uh, African south of the Sahara, uh, the Bronx has more people from Ghana than any other uh, borough in New York City, and perhaps than any other county in the United States. I don't know. This is one of the little known facts. That the the uh, sub-Saharan African immigration to the Bronx is considerable. It's uh, basically in the same area as the Dominicans are, the, the, the West Bronx. Mm. And um, I, th I think we, we're running. We, uh, OK, the if Italian we go population. go on again, uh, yes. Uh, here, Italian ancestry, and here we see um, that uh, there still is an Italian presence in the Pelham Bay area, in Throg's Neck, uh, but there aren't that many dots. You can look at the individual dots. You can see that the Italian population is nothing like the Dominican population. I think the uh, Dominican population is perhaps four times as large now as the Italian population. And of course, just 20 or 30 years ago, the reverse was true. Uh, so, so we still have an Italian uh, presence, not so much around Arthur Avenue anymore, mm -hmm. though. Basically, it's in the extreme East Bronx. We cannot, we don't have much more time, Professor. Uh, but what are some of the changes that we are experiencing well, in the Bronx? Well, if you take a look I think at, we have uh, another chart that may show that. Yes, let's let's go on to let's see. Keep, uh, uh, let's keep the. Uh, okay, there you go. What are what are, is that the one we were looking uh, for? Well, we is do have ratio, changes ratio from 1960 to to 2000. And you can just see there the non-Hispanic white population, dark blue dots, going uh, in, in one direction between 1960 and 2000. The Hispanic population, orange, going in another direction. Uh, the black population, green, uh, uh, going in another population, but actually more or less stabilizing. Uh, th this, this should uh, be news to nobody. <laughs> Wow, but, but the decline of the white the population, of white there population indicated by those blue uh, dots is, is significant. 1.1 1 .1 million whites in 1960. Today, it's about 175,000. OK, and the next graphic, uh, uh, what does that and show And here us? are the three major Hispanic groups. We see the Puerto Rican group on top the, the, uh, over time uh, stabilizing and, in fact, declining a bit. The Dominican population, the uh, reddish uh, in the middle, uh, increasing from 1980, the first time we, we get them, but you can see they start, you know, the, the, there are not, not many Dominicans in 1980. Uh, and today, as I indicated, uh, they're far above the 200,000 mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, the um, uh, Mexican population uh, is far smaller, but increasing. And in the future, uh, it's very clear what's going to happen. Uh, the Puerto Rican population cannot increase because there aren't that many Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. It's a small country. Mm -hmm. There are three times as many Dominicans as there are Puerto Ricans, so it's possible that... Uh, the potential the, for growth is and there. And there are 10 times as many Mexicans as there are Dominicans. There are 100 million Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And they're coming from all over the United States. So, so, so in, in the future, you know, logic would tell us uh, the, the Bronx is not going to have a kind of dominant Puerto Rican population that we still do now. Well, we're going to have you back in a few minutes to talk about the future of the Bronx. First, we're <laughs> going to be talking to Professor uh, Alton, who is the uh, official historian of the Bronx. We'll be right back.